Welcome, wonderful people, to the new year Sunday rune and card reading. Guys, um, welcome back to anyone who is already a part of our amazing community. Guys, thank you and Happy New Year. I hope you've had an amazing Christmas and may 2020 um, bring you your every desire. It's a very powerful year astrologically. It's very interesting as I was meditating before it's, I guess, in my preparation for this reading, I was called to connect with certain constellations. I'm going to talk you through them in just a moment um, before we then kind of open the space for you guys to lean into your intuition and see which reading is speaking to you the most. And indeed, it may, of course, be more than one. For anyone that is new to this channel, to this community, welcome. I'm Jenny Florence. Guys, this is an extraordinary community. If you start to read the comments on some of the readings um, that I've done previously, and indeed this one, no doubt, you will discover that we are a community of spiritual warriors. Guys, you blow me away. Um, your comments, your shares, the sharing of your journey, your support of me, thank you so, so much. Also, your support of one another. I mean, wow, guys, you are just amazing the way you are navigating your lives, finding insights, sharing your insights, your awareness. So, yeah, anyone new to the channel, really welcome. Um, I put a lot of free resources into the world, so do check out the information box below. I give away a free private reading. I draw a name out of the hat for one of my subscribers every month. And in fact, in the month of January, I will be holding back some packs of the Art of Manifestation Oracle cards and sending them out to a few subscribers. Again, the, the names will be drawn randomly, but... The Art of Manifestation Oracle cards are launched into the world this January. So for me, it's a big month um, as these are my cards. They're the first pack of cards I've made. Each one carries a very specific message that at some point I have been gifted with, either channeled um, through meditation, um, through some kind of a sign or a signal. So they're they're deeply personal, but they're quite direct as well. And I think sometimes we need a direct and clear guidance, which is why I decided to put those messages into a pack of cards. So guys, let's connect in with the constellations. Our first constellation is Aquila the Eagle. Now Aquila was, um, Aquila is known to be a carrier of prayers and was also known to carry in legend the thunderbolts of Zeus. It's a very powerful, very dynamic energy. Each of, these, um, each of these constellations came with a very clear message as I meditated into the energy. The energy of Aquila, you are, are invited to truly understand the nature of power and of empowerment, to understand the way that power exists within our relationships and to step into the source of your own empowerment. That was the energy and the message that came with Aquila. We then had Lapis, the hare. This is a symbol of fertility. There's a playful, resourceful, energetic kind of um, feeling to it. And as I meditated, you, the message again was an invitation to bring laughter into your journey, to remember to play, to remember to take time to be playful in your dealings, to learn to laugh at ourselves, to use humour as a way of navigating life and navigating our challenges. And when I say using humour, I mean, you know, the ability to laugh at ourselves, not the ability, I, the ability I was going to say to laugh at others. You know, sometimes humour can be used in quite a slightly negative way. You know, it's actually, this is about being humorous in a way where we laugh with people rather than at people. So a really lovely, playful, joyful energy. And the last constellation, the third constellation with reading number three, is Columba, the dove, a symbol of devotion. This was Noah's dove, a symbol of hope, a symbol of light. And the message that came with this particular constellation was an invitation to embrace your potential to bring light to all aspects of your life as you travel through life, to be aware that we, we actually have the capacity to become transformative. 
If we use, I would say, a collaboration of mindfulness and emotional awareness, you know, every emotion, emotions carry a lot of power and a lot of energy. And depending on our attitudes, our thinking patterns, this combination can shift our energetic frequency. So a calling to really walk that pathway of light and to understand your capacity to be transformative. Very powerful, each of these. And all of them carrying some essence, I think, of transformation. So wonderful people, on the screen below you will see the timings for each of the readings. Sit, you may want to pause the video for a short while, connect in with whichever reading is calling to you. It may be more than one or you may wish to return to the readings at a later date. They are now in a playlist, so if you go to the main channel, the main A to Z of Emotional Health channel on YouTube, you will find, um, I don't have many playlists, so they're easy to find, and I will put the weekly rune and card readings in that playlist every week, so you can always find what you're looking for. And, and actually, just before I wrap up, guys, likewise, if there are any cards or runes that you are drawn to and you'd like to know what they are, people often ask. On my website, there is a page dedicated to any books that I reference and all of the cards that I use and the runes are there so you can find find them. And as I said, there, there are photographs, so you should easily find the ones you're looking for. So guys, so, so much love to you. Um, May 2020 be just amazing. And yeah, I will leave you to connect in with your readings. Welcome to reading number one, supported and guided by the energy of Aquila the Eagle. We have the rune of possessions and we have the rune of openings. That's a powerful combination, particularly given that the energy of Aquila is about empowerment or the message that was given. Now, the rune of possessions speaks of nourishment from the worldly to the divine. It speaks often of unexpected surprises, gains, rewards. It also asks you to, be, to remain humble um, to remain humble in your success. The rune of openings is, it's like we find direction. It's not just that we are sort of out of darkness into light. It is literally new clarity. A clarity of a state of mind is resolved. You discover your direction. You know where you're going. You know what the next step is. It's got a very direct and again, very empowered energy. So that's pretty interesting, actually. I'm going to move this down here. I think it's still in camera. Yep, fantastic. And let's make space for the cards. So we have, first of all, the energy of the moon, the card of the moon. This is a rite of passage. We then have the four of pentacles. You're coming through something. Wow, ace of pentacles, new beginnings. There's your opening. Three of cups and... King of Wands. Very powerful lineup, guys, in terms of new beginnings coming through something. Again, I love this possessions. Um, you know, nourishment from the worldly to the divine, unexpected surprises, gains, rewards. The moon indicates. I'm going to say sometimes with the, the energy of the moon, we are in a space of, it's like we experience something of the shadow side of ourselves, the unconscious, but we sometimes have to travel into the unconscious in order to come back out and discover light illumination. Now this reading is suggesting that you do. It's suggesting that maybe you are, you're either sitting in the shadow of something and that is about to shift, an opening is going to occur, or indeed it may be that you are 
already coming through something. You've understood something at a very, very deep and unconscious level. Now, there's definitely a shift and an opening suggested here. Four of Pentacles. It's like an apprenticeship. It's a new beginning. This is this new direction. Now, for some of you, this may mean that you, you get it. You understand the next step on the, your pathway. You know where you're going or you discover where you're going. But this is new beginnings, Ace of Pentacles. I think for some of you, there will be, it's, this is all about new beginnings, new opportunities, discovering clarity, bringing light where there is darkness in terms of, um, it's not like a deep despair kind of darkness. I'm just, it's more where we are, our vision is shrouded. We're not, we're just not clear. And that clarity comes. It may be that you are, offered an opportunity, sometimes um, maybe some money comes available for you in some way, something comes that initiates, it, initiates a new beginning, a new opportunity for change. The Three of Cups is a card of falling in love. It can be a little bit blind, you know, the, they say that love is blind. We can be a little bit tangled in the dream of something or indeed someone, but I would have to say this card, the King of Wands here, there's a stability, there's a solid creativity. Now, I think you are offered an opportunity. And that opportunity um, is bringing about change, new beginnings, new opportunities. Okay, so we have the card of the South Node, Life's Debts. Lovely. We have the Priestess, Intuition. Heightened intuition, heightened awareness, followed by the card of success. We then have, okay, lovely, I've got that. We have uncertainty. We have internal dialogue. I hope these are still going to be in camera. I may have to slide them along. I'm going to place life steps up here and move the cards along so we have room for them all. I think we will. I'm never sure when I do these readings quite how I'm going to lay the cards out as they come. Okay, still going to move them along. This is really, really interesting, this reading. There's a very clear message here. You are being asked to, to step up. This is very much about empowerment. Somewhere along the line, this is the shadow aspect, the unconscious. Somewhere along the line, you have developed some kind of a, a belief or a, I don't know, some, something has affected you that has caused you to have some kind of element of self-doubt about the possibilities that are available to you and it has affected the way in which you handle decision making and uncertainty and it's created quite a strong what I would call negative inner dialogue that those kind of thinking patterns where we we actually self-sabotage or we disempower ourselves and it's almost as though we offer everybody else the support they need, but we don't offer it to ourselves. Somehow, energetically, we hold ourselves back in some way, just because that inner dialogue is, is often really prolific. I mean, that's it's a very human thing. I know when I really started listening to my inner dialogue, I was utterly horrified. So uh, how, how negative, how much negative stuff, even though I think of myself as a really very, very positive person, I look at things from a very positive perspective. But actually, I, I really realised how much was trundling away. You're being asked to let go of that. Step up. Um, like, listen to your intuition. I think you have an availability at the moment for heightened levels of intuition, heightened levels of awareness. Very powerful time because in the first week of January, at the end, we have Saturn and Pluto coming together. This is the big the big players who are calling us to let go of anything that no longer serves us. They are really edging closer and closer together and they meet on the 7th of January. So very powerful times, guys. But it, 
we're also in eclipse season, so we can really receive some massive kind of downloads of insight and awareness. It's time to lay something to rest. It's time to put something down. Um, it's time to feel okay about your past. Now, I know that's difficult if we've had challenges in the past, but if we continue to hold on to them, and or the internal dialogue within our mind is continuing to hold on to them. It energetically clings, it slows us down. You are being called, it's, as I said, it's a rite of passage, a new window of opportunity being offered to you. I'm going to say, I think I, that somebody or something is offered to you. It's some kind of a new opportunity. Someone who is... This may be you, it may be you arrive at a space where you feel that you have consolidated your own learning, you fall in love with life again, you're ready for a new beginning. But I think it may for some of you actually be initiated by somebody, someone who comes into your world or is around you at the moment, the energy of quite a creative, sound, solid kind of learned person, somebody who really gets what life is about and kind of radiates something of that. Um, very creative person. I think that is around. For some of you, this could be a new relationship. It's like falling in love with someone. Someone comes into your world. For some of you, the new beginning is an initiation into some aspect of your career or a career move. There's something that, there's a, there's a flavor of liberation but the fundamental liberation comes not just because of the circumstances, but because of your ability to lean into the circumstances. And by leaning into the circumstances, it's like taking advantage and knowing that you have the right to take advantage of an opportunity if it's offered to you. So heightened levels of intuition, a card of success, new opportunities, new energy, uncertainty, Lots of little bits on the table. Uncertainty. Calm the noise within your mind. Get still and meditate. If you are still uncertain, give yourself four hours and meditate again. If you are still unclear, wait for four days and if necessary, four weeks. The answer will come. The key here is to listen to your internal dialogue. We all have an internal dialogue within our mind, a constant stream of inner conversation. Is your dialogue kind, supportive and affirming, or is it critical and judgmental of yourself and others? This card asks you to listen to your inner words and, if necessary, take steps to consciously change your language. Very powerful message indeed. It was certainly a message that I once needed to hear. And to be honest, it's one that I remind myself of every now and then. Walk your talk. Become what you believe. Are your thoughts and words in alignment with your core inner values? If you believe in, you know, sharing love and being supportive and kind, are you actually kind to yourself? This card asks you to walk your talk, become your own personal hero or heroine and step into the very best version of yourself, radiating authenticity into the world. Be your brilliant self. Be great today. Be brilliant. This card asks you to get in touch with the extraordinariness of everyday living. Go about your daily life doing everything to the very best of your ability. That's the pathway of the spiritual warrior, guys. Be extraordinary in an ordinary way. Your brilliance will radiate into the world, creating more change than you could possibly imagine. Very, very powerful, guys. This is such an, inv an invitation to step into the best version of yourself, to give yourself permission to do so. It's an amazing read, I think, for the new year. Opportunities are going to be presented to you. They may come, I believe, through somebody. This is not a gender card, even though it's a king. It's the energy has, has that sense and that flavour of self-awareness, of creativity, and abil an ability to really engage with life from a position of consciousness. And somehow that shift, I don't know whether they bring an opportunity or for you guys, if it's a new partnership for some of you, a new relationship, whether it comes through work, but one way or the other, opportunities are being brought to you. Change will feel uncertain. 
just take your time. There's no need to rush. The key here is shifting any negativity within you, stepping up and allowing yourself to be the best version of you. It's like you're putting something down and laying it to rest. You no longer have to carry something that has held you back. Wonderful people. Have an amazing 2020. Happy New Year and I look forward to seeing you for the weekly readings and of course the big monthlies and if you haven't yet checked them out the January readings are live and also the big 2020s for an overall flavour for every sign. So much love to you guys. Welcome to reading number two, guided by Lapis, the hair, the energy of resourcefulness, a sim the symbol of fertility, an ability to play and be playful in life, to hold um, a lighter viewpoint, I guess. We have the rune of protection and we have the rune of movement. Now, the rune of protection speaks of a need to be managing our emotions, what I would call the highs and the lows. It sometimes speaks of unexpected opportunities, unexpected changes. And it, it asks us not to collapse ourselves into our emotions, the highs and the lows that take place during accelerated periods of growth and change. Now the, the rune of movement speaks of the bettering of any situation. It's the moving of something forwards. It doesn't always mean that something happens quickly, but it's interesting because the rune of protection speaks of accelerated periods of growth and the way that our the way that we emotionally respond to those periods. So it's an interesting combination. It's going to be fascinating to see what the cards show us. You're certainly being called to hold your hold hold a playful attitude, be light-minded in your perspectives on things. So shifting, changing, that's what I'm I'm feeling in the re in the reading. I'm just going to move the cards over here. Let's first of all look at this. We have, right, Seventh House Partners. Okay, let's place that up here. Okay, so we have the High Priestess. This is about making decisions. There's an evaluation going on. Sometimes we have to let something go. Big goodness me, guys, these are huge cards. Um, major, major cards. Okay, so... Partners, the High Priestess, decision-making. Remember that life is not black and white. You know, there's a lot of shades of colour in between. The Wheel of Fortune, things are shifting, things are turning. You're ready to look at something. You're ready to look at something and see it for what it is. We have the Ten of Cups. Now, let's make sure these are all in camera. Yes, they are. Lovely and the Queen of Swords. The Ten of Cups would suggest, I'm going to say, a new phase in relationship. It usually suggests a phase of, I want to say honesty, there is actually a clear message coming through here. There are decisions that need to be made here. You are being called to view something and to gain some kind of clarity. That's the move forwards. It's also the um, the rune of protection, the message from this rune, and the energy of Lapis. You're being asked to evaluate from, it's kind of like, try not to take things too seriously. I, I know that's really difficult if we are going through difficulties, but sometimes being able to stand back and sort of, just going to say, laugh at our humanness it is a real life skill. So changes, decisions, the wheel of fortune, the, the world is shifting, but you are ready to look at something for what it is. And it is connected to partnership. Being able to look at something for what it is shifts it and moves it forwards. Remember the rune of movement, the bettering of any situation. Something has been stuck. Something hasn't been moving forwards. But we do move forwards to a new phase in relationship and you are 
Also being asked, this is interesting, the Queen of Swords, sometimes it's a real request and an invitation to be really crystal clear about what you think, to hold your vision, to hold your intentions. It can also bring a message where it invites us to make sure that we are not so crystal clear that we become fixed, we're not able to be flexible or to budge at all. Um, it's almost as though we disconnect from emotion. So there's a dual message here. I think don't collapse yourselves into the emotionality of the situation because if we do that, we just become reactive rather than responsive. But at the same time, you're also asked not to dismiss your emotions to the point where you don't listen to them. Your emotions are the bringers of information. Wonderful. We have the energy of the emperor and the card of art. Something shifts and moves forwards. We have the card of mistakes, problems, new love and authenticity. Very clear message here. Okay. As I read these cards, because they have very clear messages, as I've said, I will also connect in with the message that I'm really hearing. Okay. I'm going to say you guys are ready for a new phase in relationship, whether that's an existing relationship or whether it is within yourselves. The key here is your authenticity. You're actually ready to look at yourself. You're ready to understand yourself and you're ready to understand your part in the way that relationships have run, whether you've had insecurities that have shown up in relationships and that that has caused a problem for you or for the other person, whether there is, whatever it is, you are ready to look at this from a different perspective, from a creative perspective. This is stepping into your own, um, the hero or the heroine within you, being yourself, I do hear a very clear message that some of you have tried to meet the needs of someone else in a relationship and it's led to you not kind of not being your authentic self. Um, and in a way, however much we try to do that, if we ourselves can't really show up in as, as the fullest, best version of us, the other person can never really get to know us. You know, we can't have an equal relationship, even if we are trying to really take care of the other person and with the very best of intentions, we are investing heavily in trying to make a relationship work. If we're not being true to ourselves, then we, we somehow sabotage something at quite a core level, but completely inadvertently. It's a very human thing. Card of partnership, the high priestess making decisions. This is about stepping into the best version of you, finding a creative way through this. Mistakes. If you feel you have made a mistake, or indeed someone else has done so with impact on you, please do not feel bad about this. Treasure and value your mistakes and those of others around you. They are the cutting edge of our personal growth and evolution. Lean into the learning and celebrate your openness to grow. I really think that's absolutely true. I've made some monumental mistakes in my life and was really gifted with this message, which helped me to kind of almost really retrieve something of my self-esteem at a time when I felt I had really made some very difficult or, you know, what I considered at the time to be bad decisions. Once I started to recognise the learning and to then become discerning because of that learning, I began to get myself back on track. Problems. This card asks you to view any problems as an opportunity rather than a crisis. I love that it's six under the card of the hanged man. Whenever we identify a problem, our very recognition and acknowledgement of this difficulty creates an opportunity to seek a potential solution. As long as a problem remains unseen or indeed denied, the doorway to a potential solution remains closed. You're ready to look at something through the eyes of honesty and it shifts. It shifts the wheel of fortune through. Ten of Cups. It brings a new phase of relationship. If you are in an existing relationship, 
it opens up an opportunity for a new phase of what I would call a conscious relationship, where you know who you are. You speak to one another openly. You know where you stand. New love. For those of you that are embarking on new relationships or new love, you're ready for this. You're ready and available because you've kind of work through the process of those aspects of your mistakes and problems that have maybe been holding you back or stopping you from feeling that either you're entitled to love or just that you're ready to kind of step into that zone of, I'm going to say risk, because I think choosing to open ourselves up to love is a vulnerable place, actually. The energy of new love is around you. Sometimes if we have been hurt within relationship, we retreat, afraid of being hurt again. This card brings a clear message and is an indication of your readiness to embrace love and begin a new relationship. It is safe to reach out. Really lovely energy for a new year reading. Authenticity. Hold your head up high, walk tall and be your authentic self. This card asks you to shed the masks that you believed you were required to wear. Walk to the beat of your own drum and do not be afraid to shine. In doing so, you give others permission to do the same. This is really lovely. It's got a wonderful flavour, very um, enriching, which I think is this wonderful energy of the hair, lapis, symbolising fertility, re resourcefulness, new energy, an ability to be playful, to um, curiosity, discovery, that's what I'm really hearing as well, coming through very cl clearly those words, curiosity, the discovery, readiness to discover, and to discover yourself and your own authenticity through relationship. You are ready to begin afresh, whether that is in an existing phase of relationship that has been stuck or whether it is a new relationship. Guys, this is lovely, a wonderful, creative, playful energy, and it allows you to step into the best version of you and to be loved and cherished for who you are. Guys, so, so much love to you. Have an amazing 2020, and I look forward to seeing you for some of the other readings. If you haven't yet checked out the January readings, um, they are all live and uploaded. And um, also big 2020s if you're wanting to check in on a flavour for the coming year. And they are also in a playlist, so you'll be able to access them from the, the channel page. So much love to you guys. Welcome to reading number three, overseen and connected with the energy of Columba, the dove, the bringer of hope, the carrier of light. So our first rune is the rune of initiation. This is a spiritual journey. It makes a reference to our own personal transformation in terms of our connection with the divine. And we have the rune of the self. This reading is speaking very strongly of a personal transformation in terms of your own spiritual journey. Let's move this down. Make sure we are still in camera. Yes, we are. Lovely. So let's move our cards over. Okay, Lunar Eclipse, Change. Wow, this is such a powerful reading, guys. Um, this is internal change. This is understanding. I mean, we are bang in the middle of eclipse season as well. So very powerful opportunity. But this is about personal transformation. Ace of Swords, the Chariot. Wow, guys, two aces. <laughs> Knight of Swords and the Fool. Right, okay. So... This is a reading of personal transformation. You are asked to be very clear about what you actually desire. I feel as though um, it's like your life is gathering momentum. The pace is speeding up. It's as though with eclipse season, we're bang in the middle of eclipse season. During eclipse season, um, things can happen very quickly. 
Things are speeding up. They are moving forwards. We are talking new opportunities, new beginnings. I'm also going to say the Knight of Swords would suggest that something happens around you, something external comes along and it triggers an opportunity for change. It's like it's a window of opportunity. It creates something that we have to respond to. So it feels like the impetus to change comes from the outside. The reality is it's part of your spiritual pathway. But something happens that causes, um, as I said, it causes you to have to respond in some way. What it actually does, though, is it, it creates a new beginning or a new opportunity. You're definitely being presented with something. And I'm going to say this card suggests that you may it may feel as though you are required or needing to take a risk. However, I'm going to say if you don't take that risk, then you will probably live for, it's one of that, those cards that says if you don't take the risk, you will forever spend your life looking back and wondering how it would have been if you had. It's that kind of flavour to it. Let's um, look at our other cards. Wow. Okay, Prince of Cups, things are moving forwards for you. Ground yourself. Forgiveness of others. Allow yourself to receive and open the floodgates. Okay, this is a very powerful time of change. There's a very, very clear message here. Change and transition are not always easy. I think we inherently wobble. It's just such a personal thing. Um, and depending on where we are and, and what we are experiencing... Sometimes it can genuinely feel as though life is happening to us. The reading here is suggesting that you literally are in the midst of a massive transitionary period and it can feel a bit like everything around you is happening. And what I'm hearing is it, it's been feeling a bit like a, back to the eclipse season, that things are happening very quickly, um, almost as though you come up for air and something else happens and you're having to make another decision and something else happens and you have to make another decision. Now, open the floodgates. If we are unable to acknowledge and talk about our feelings, they stack up and build up like a pressure cooker, waiting to blow, colouring our ability to see clearly. This card calls you to acknowledge your emotions and find a way to release them. Write down your thoughts and feelings and if needed, reach out for professional help. Transition and change are very intense. This reading has an intensity about it and you are asked to notice your emotions and not let them stack up really important. Um, allow yourself to re release those emotions and I'm going to say ground yourself. This card is a request to you to literally ground yourself. Go outdoors, take off your shoes and find somewhere where it is safe to stand barefoot. Imagine roots growing out of your feet, travelling down into the soil beneath you, anchoring you with the nurturing energy of the earth. Forgiveness of others. Forgiveness does not mean that something bad that happened to us was okay. Forgiveness means that we choose to move beyond the experience and to release any need for ongoing, sorry, any ongoing need for retribution. In doing so, we no longer need to keep the memory of what happened alive within us. This choice reinstates our entitlement to be in charge of our own lives. It's a massive transformation here, a massive shift in energy around you guys. Allow yourself to receive. One of the greatest blocks in our ability to manifest our greatest desires is an inability to allow ourselves to receive. This card asks that you take some time to identify any inner beliefs, perceptions and attitudes that stop you from receiving and one by one remove these resistances. There is a powerful opportunity for change taking place around you. That is the energy. I think for some of you, it feels as though you're being pushed into those changes. But actually, deep down, 
It is a change that I think a part of you has called for, literally at a level of soul, at a level of your calling, your being offered a, a window of opportunity. I think for some of you, it just feels like stuff is happening so fast that you're having trouble keeping your feet on the ground. It doesn't necessarily feel like it's all negative, but I do think it's feeling a bit wobbly just because of the speed at which things are changing or opportunities are happening or events around you are taking place. You know, sometimes it feels like we just come up for air and something else happens again. It's got that sort of um, real powerful flavour. But it is offering you huge opportunities to move forwards. And it is also connected to um, our own potential. It's like our own calling, our own pathway. The Prince of Cups. We have the Prince of Cups here, which suggests that we are needing to navigate from a position of emotional awareness alongside the card of Open the Floodgates. Now, the Prince of Cups is a lovely image. He's an image of transformation. He carries um, a little... Um, vessel in his hand with the snake of transformation within it and he is, his chariot is drawn by an eagle and he glides over the water and the water is representative of powerful emotions. He's aware of his emotions, he understands them as a source of empowerment rather than a kind of an impediment. And he's therefore able to use that emotional energy to move himself forwards, to make conscious choices and decisions. We have the Magus. This is the card of the Magician in some other packs. It's about our capacity to be co-creative, to manifest. This card also says you have... Um, you have very big powers of communication. You can see things clearly. This is a card where we integrate our experience into um, our experiences into wisdom. Yeah, you know, we learn from the past rather than rather than allowing the past to guide us. We learn from it, and our learning becomes a source of internal empowerment. That also creates the emotional shift. If we are still hung up on something from our past, then the emotional residue is a bit like scar tissue and it kind of creates a block. Whereas if we've understood the learning from the experience or we recognise that maybe we've become a better person because of something that happened, um, we now carry wisdom, we carry awareness, we can learn to be discerning. You are being asked to allow yourselves to receive. This is really speaking very clearly. The changes that are taking place, I'm really hearing, are necessary to your personal growth and evolution at a level of soul. Now, it, it doesn't mean that the changes are happening. As I said, they're all negative. I think for some of you, there are genuinely some challenges that you're facing and that these are quite loaded emotionally. So you're being asked to understand your emotions as a source of empowerment. They carry a lot of energy. Um, for those of you that are, are new to, to my work, if you check out my library, the A to Z of Emotional Health, that's azemotionalhealth.com, that is a resource that is full of information about emotions, emotional health. Um, you may want to check out, I wrote a book called Mindfulness Meets Emotional Awareness. I've taken our most challenging emotions and explained how they serve us and, you know, with really pragmatic exercises so that we can learn how to shift our emotional experiences to one of positivity and empowerment. For some of you, it's not it's not so, so challenging, it's more that things are happening at such a pace that you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed emotionally and it's kind of like you feel as though you're coming up for air. But these changes are important and yes, stuff is going on around you, that's for sure. But the message here is very clear. The changes that are taking place are creating new opportunities, new windows of opportunity, a whole new phase of growth.
and it is deeply connected to your own spiritual pathway and to the evolution of your own personal consciousness. Very, very powerful reading. Guys, big respect. I mean, everyone in this community is walking that pathway of the spiritual warrior. You wouldn't be checking in with readings like this if you weren't. But, you know, when stuff happens fast, it can be really hard to remain anchored. But yeah, ground yourself. There's opportunity here to let go of something and move beyond something. There are opportunities being offered to you in the process of the stuff that's going on around you. So really big respect and so, so much love to you. Um, if you haven't yet checked out the January readings that for the month do please do so and of course also the big 2020s the overall flavor of the coming year and um, they are in a playlist the big 2020 readings so if you've not checked in on them yet um yeah do do you should be able to find them quite easily on the um on the main sort of a to z emotional health youtube channel page i don't have a ton of playlists so guys so so much love to you namaste